Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, today, we're going to be starting on the build for the OMP Hobby M7. I'm super excited to get this one going, and I think you probably are too. And as you can see in front of me, I have the beautiful blue and orange canopy. And I also have the orange painted tail boom that I may install, I'm not sure yet, but it matches the canopy quite well, so I might go with that. So I'm going to start getting parts out, lay them out on this towel here, and we'll get started. Starting off with the block. Got the uh, screws and stuff. There's the head block. And the stock dampers are just rubber. And we've got spindle, and that's what we're going to start with. Let's get some Loctite ready. So we've got a couple screws here for the teeter. And that is this piece right here. That is where the blade, or spindle rather, teeters on the head block. And it's just held in with a couple bearings, a couple screws. So we're gonna do that. Sure, it's somewhat aligned here. So you've got two different kinds here. There's one that's got a little bit of a concave shape or convex, and then this one's just flat. And the flat one goes into the head like that. I'm gonna get some grease. One, two, three. And get the other one. One, two, three. Make sure to center that teeter. There we go. And these guys. And there is the main rotor. Yep. Set that off to the side there. Grab our first blade grip. You can see there. You can grease the bearings from the outside. There's a couple of screws that you use to plug those holes. All right, let's get these bearings ready. The 
thrust wounds. Now we've got feathering shaft bolts and washers and the bolts for the grease ports. Do those first real quick. It's got a little shim that goes on the screw. I'm not going to use the grease ports for now, like to actually grease it because I already have the bearings out. Get the bearings situated. Getting these thrust bearings lubed up real quick. I use Mobile EP1 for this. This is my grease of choice. Now I need to find the bigger thrust bearing. Maybe that one. This one's much tighter and the looser one goes on the inside let's get a bearing in there nice crisp fit there this one goes first and then smaller ID and we've got a washer and the other bearing you just big beefy bolts here. Time for the other one. You gotta make sure that little shim in there is lined up. And there's the head. And then just crank them down. There's a little bit of preload on these, especially when they're brand new. 
but it'll wear in a little bit and uh, once it's under load, bearing smooth out. That is a solid piece of metal right there. All right, so I've already done one of these. I'm gonna do the other one for you. These swash driver arms. So it'll take a bearing, put one on, on one side, and then you've got these little brass washers, shims. You get one of those on each, between the two bearings, and you put the other side in. And if you're having trouble get them, getting the bearings aligned to get them pushed in, I use a two millimeter hex driver, which has a three millimeter shank. And uh, you can do that and then press the arm down. And now it's seated. So then you'll take the plastic bit and I do kind of the same thing. So I'll put the driver through and that helps you align it. These little brass eyelets, they go on the inside of the arm. Once it's in a little bit, you can press it in more. And I use a pair of pliers, just press them in. Just like that. Do the other one. And we can put those together. Same deal, there's a hex driver to center everything. Just like that. Then you'll take this guy. And feed it through. There you go. And then This little screw here, plus this washer. And that is a super free little arm there. These two little silver ones are for in between the head block and the arm. The black ones are what you use on the arm itself, as you can see there. Now we can go ahead and install these. Got these two super long screws. We got the OMP Hobby logo facing out. And we do the same trick. If it's too far off, like that one is, you might need to use a smaller driver first to get it somewhat aligned. Then you can feed that through. Take this with the angled side facing out. Down there. That little washer inside there is to prevent the bearings from locking up when you tighten this screw down. Because otherwise, the inner races will be pulled towards each other and the bearings will lock up. Tighten these up yet, just leave them loose. 
probably take him back out and relock that item, but there's that. Alright, next step is this watch plate. That was a work of art right there. Beautiful. On mine, um, all of the balls themselves are not Loctited, but the screws on the top and bottom are. I'm not 100% sure what it's going to end up being as far as production kits, so you should definitely check. Um, and once the manual's out, you should read that and make sure. But because these are not Loctited, I'm going to go ahead and take those out and Loctite them all. All right, so I'm going to set this aside and uh, start on the main bearing block. All right, here are the core three components. We're gonna take this part and this part. Make sure that's aligned there. Kind of rock it into place. We got the top piece. So this is pretty important. These two slots here need to have those M3 nuts put in first before you put this carbon plate on. Because once this plate's on, you won't be able to put those nuts in there. We've got this little bracket. This piece is symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which way around you put it on. Alright, now we're going to start on the frame. Got the uh, upper frame sides, they are not the same, so there is a left and a right. I'm going to start with the uh, left frame. Got this here, and then this here, and this there. I'm gonna leave these somewhat loose for now till I get the other side on so that I can make sure it's somewhat 90.
and I put that on backwards so I'm gonna take it off, turn it around. Set that aside for now and start on the ESC tray. This ESC tray has mounting points for a whole bunch of different ESCs. Unfortunately, the Tribunus that I have doesn't have mounting holes, so I will not be using them. So we've got a bunch of countersunk screws that will be used to attach the mounts. Bring this back in. the AC plate installed. Alright, so next up is the fly barless mount. This is a damped mount, so it's got a rubber isolation. And this piece here is a mass damper, which is only needed for certain situations. I'll put it in text, like right here somewhere. Um, but I'm not going to be using it. We also need to install the tail boom clamps. I'm going to put the plate onto these first and then put them into the frame. It'll be a little easier that way. All right, so we need to get these little rubber pieces into here. They are not symmetrical. So if you look, they're tapered. See that? Which matches the profile of plates so you need to put them in to where the profiles match. All right, so there's one in. I guess it's easier to just note that the countersink is on the top than to look at the profile. <laughs> All right, now we can mount this to the boom mounts. So use countersunk screws. do the rear one you have the slot in there that goes to the right a little notch for the alignment pin goes to the opposite side Now we can put it in the frame. But right now they're only having you install two screws on each side because the bottom screws are for the lower frame attachment, so they're not installed yet. Thank you. 
All right, next up is the canopy mounts. I'm gonna start by installing these little balls onto the metal canopy mounts. Spacer in here aligned. Gotta alternate back and forth on these because the spacer will just spin. So tighten one, then it holds the spacer a little better, and you can tighten the other one a bit more. And there we go. All right. So next we have the tail idlers. So we'll get all these screws out of here. Take. Uh, these long bolts and same deal as before you gotta make sure that washer inside there's aligned put the bolt through do the same for the other one all right so the two of these bolts are different lengths you need to pay attention to which one you're using so for the longer one you got this little spacer, which goes smaller bit down, and then that gets screwed straight up into the bracket here. The other one has a much shorter screw, and it goes into this bracket here. But first, you must put some bearings in. that so we'll take these m2 screws and take this little bracket here and install it like that but I'm gonna leave these screws a little bit loose for the meat for right now uh, that'll make it easier to do the next part Slide this. So we're going to take this bracket here that we just put the bearings in and put it in here like this. And then we'll take this countersunk screw and put it through here like that. And then we can tighten these up. And you can see this part pivots. Now we can put this one in and it goes into the little piece, the little bracket. All right, and for the belt tensioner, it's a little tricky and you need to use a little bit of force here, but uh, you need to push this in from this side like that. It's starting to go. Then you'll be able to get it all the way in just like that. And you can twist it and you can feel it click a little bit every like one sixth of a turn. And then you take the little pin thing here and screw it in backwards from the front here. Like that. I just realized I missed a couple screws here, so I'm gonna put those in real quick. All right, got those installed. Now I can go ahead and put the idler in. 
just like so. We've got button head screws on this side. And then there's a notch on the carbon part and a slot in the screw here. You gotta line those up. Just like that. Feed these screws through. Do the same for the other one. That is the end result before being installed. And you can still feel as you twist it, it locks into each position. So that's free to move there. We'll do the other side now. If you have trouble getting the assembly in, loosen this screw on each side. It'll help a little bit. So now I'll just tighten it back up. Alrighty, the frame is done for now. And we are going to move on to the main gear and one-way bearing and stuff. Here is the main gear. Absolute beefcake. Here are the flanges for the tail pulley and the tail pulley itself and the screws. And of course we got the uh, one-way bearing. You see the pins there. And that is what holds the stuff from rotate rotating in the housing. So we're going to go ahead and build the tail pulley first. Let's get all these screws. This is very similar to the M4. In fact, I think that's the same pattern. So you have a pulley itself and then you have two carbon fiber flanges that you screw on. There we go. Then we'll take this and this. And just screw it in. going in kind of cross pattern to make sure it seats evenly. There we go. Lovely. All right, next up is the motor mount counter bearing. Um, they, they do want you to put the motor on at this step. However, I'm going to build the airframe completely uh, with no electronics in it to get a final weight. And then I'm gonna put the electronics in it. So I'm not gonna put the motor in right now. I'm just gonna put everything else together. Get the bearings out of here. Got one down here. And we'll get our pin in and put it with the set screws up. Put the other bearing in to the motor mount. And we will push these together and screw it in. Now 
and then put the set screw in the pinion just so I don't lose it. I'm not gonna lock tight it though. Alright, next up is the main gear and the main shaft installation. So we will take the gear and the little spacer, kind of somewhat align them, slide it into place, and then feed the main shaft down. differently so I'm putting the shaft just slightly installed put the spacer there and should be able to there we go just press it down now all right just a little bit sticking out past the gear and get our tail pulley on there and press the shaft the rest of the way down. All right, got it aligned there. And then we can go ahead and get that Jesus bolt in there. Frame, main shaft, pulleys, gears. All right, Let's start on the tail. So first things first again, going to grease some stuff. Get the ball races from the thrust bearings. I'm going to do the dampers. All right, so let's start putting these in. Got one, two, three on this side. One, two, on this side. So what I'm going to do is put a screw on this spindle here. I do the tail a little bit different from I do, how I do the head. So I think it makes it a little easier. I'm going to put bearing, shim, thrust bearing outer race, tighter on the spindle. Thrust race, thrust bearing inner race, looser on the spindle. Then I shove that down into the blade grip. Press it in. Now I'll take the other bearing, put that one in. When I pull the spindle out, I'm gonna hold those bearings in so that they stay put. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. And we can press this bearing in. Now, probably should have done this first, but I'm gonna put the uh, holes on the grips. can put it back together. So put the spindle through one of them. Get this little spacer. The uh, convex side goes towards the grip and that part goes against the O-rings.
push it down through. Put the other one of those on. Make sure these are facing the right way. There's that. Now I just need to put the other screw in to the spindle. This thing's awesome. What's this? Alright, now we're going to start on part of the tail. First up's the tail idler. It's just a real quick step before we get on to the uh, pitch slider. So you've got two pieces here, one's threaded, one isn't. Put the screw through the unthreaded one. Put the bearings through. And attach the other piece. I'm going to leave that somewhat loose for now. Because I need to make sure it's aligned. And now we can get onto the pitch slider. And press these in. The orientation on these is such that the one on the left has the OMP Hobby logo when viewed like this. And we can get the several components here. So we've got bearing, shim, this, then bearing. And put a little bit of Loctite on this. Then we will thread this on. It is reverse threaded. Give it one more. Alright. Spins nice and free. No play. Good to go. Now we got the pitch arm. Got this guy. We got this guy. We got this guy. And it goes in the outer hole. Pay attention to the orientation here. The smaller ones go to hold this onto the arm, or <laughs> this part of the arm onto this part of the arm. It goes like this, and like this. bearings in now. From the inside. Alright. Then we got this guy, which goes here. This is symmetrical, so doesn't matter which way you put it on. And we can put these in. For these, since they're threaded towards the head but not at the end, I use a screwdriver to apply the Loctite to it. There you go.
All right, next up is the tail case. I'm gonna use just a teeny tiny little bit of green Loctite on these. Very, very small amount. Goes a long way. from the inside. All right. I do think I'm gonna go ahead and go for the colored boom. There's a little bit of a weight penalty, but I think the increase in visibility is worth it. So, got the bright orange tail boom. All right, so here's my little trick to getting belts in, down through the boom. Take a zip tie. Do not, and I mean do not, crank it down all the way because you will destroy the belt. But you can do it just enough that it fits through the boom. Then you can feed it through without any problems. I used to do the thing where you attach it to the tail push rod, but this is way easier. Then you can just cut the zip tie afterwards, just like that. And we'll <clears throat> feed the belt into the tail box, kind of hold it in place while you uh, insert it into the boom. And the belt came out a little bit. <laughs> All right. All right. Got these uh, little spacer thingies, which prevents the tail boom from being crushed flat by the head, which is less important with the aluminum boom, um, but very important for the carbon fiber one. Just realized I put this on backwards uh, as soon as I finished screwing it in. So on this side of the tailcase, you have this little line or this little indentation. That needs to be on the opposite side of the little cut in the boom there. And right now it's on the same side. So it's backwards. So I gotta take these out and flip it around. All right, let me get our pulley here. The clamp goes on the left side of the tail case. So there's a little clamp here with a screw hole that goes to the left. Just press it down into there and pull it into position. Then we'll take our tail shaft. It's hard to, it's kind of hard to see, but this hole's a little bit closer to the end than this one. And the one that's a little bit further away from the end goes into the pulley. Push it a little bit past so that I can line it up with the holes in the pulley. Push it back down in. And we'll take this very special screw. Screw that down through the pulley, through the shaft. And 
now we can come back to the idler and uh, goes down like this and then you screw it in from each side There's the idler. Now we can take our slider, put it on the tail shaft, nice and free. Then we can go on with the pitch slider. And we can take our tail grips and get that in there. There we go. And get these clipped on. All right, that is the tail, most of the way done. Beautiful. All right, now is the time when this gets a little difficult because my desk is not big enough to fit everything in frame at the same time. First, before we proceed, this little piece of plastic that comes along with the tail parts, the tail clamps, uh, now is the time to put that in. And it just goes in this back clamp here, like that, it just clicks into place. So now, we can go ahead and get the tail boom ready. I'm going to make sure the belt has no twists on the inside of the boom for right now. Now that I've made sure of that, I'm gonna go 90 degrees this way. So starting here, go like that. And that gets you the proper spin direction on the tail. So now I'm gonna turn it, the entire thing, so that the tail shaft is facing this way. I'm going to flip the frame upside down and start feeding it through. Once I get it kind of here-ish, I'm going to pull this side out of here. We're getting there. I'm going to feed the boom in more. Get the slot on the boom lined up. Once you've got it fed all the way down like this, you can start wrapping the belt around the pulley. Until it's in. And pull the boom out a little bit to tighten it and double check that everything's going the right way. Yep, tail's going the right direction. All right, and there it is. Now is when we get the main shaft collar. Get the lip right here facing downwards.
pull up on the main shaft, push down on the collar, tighten it up. Good and solid. Now that that's done, we get to set this aside once again and start on the lower frame. Alright, got a couple carbon plates here. That goes here and here. With some countersunk screws. Done. And we'll do this one, which is basically the same. The right lower frame. So here, take this little bracket here, and it goes right here. All right, now we're gonna do the battery latching mechanisms. There are two, one for each side of the frame. We've already put one together and I'm gonna show you how to do the other one. So you take this pin, put the spring on it, put that up through the base. Put the knob on. I'll work with it to get the alignment right. There we go. And take screw, put the washer on it, get rid of the old Loctite, and then put the screw in, start cranking it down. You'll feel it complete there. And you can see when you twist it to the left, pulls that pin out. Now, don't do it too far when it's not installed the frame because the frame acts as part of stabilizing the uh, pin, keeping it straight. So that is the two locking mechanisms. Now we can go ahead and put the two frame sides together using just this one bracket back here for now, obviously. that. Now we can take our upper frame and everything with it and put this plate in place. There's no screws yet. It's just held in with friction. like that and we can take the lowers and feed them down feed it down into the lower section and that is held in like that and then we can take these parts the canopy uh, standoff spacer thingy and just screw this down 
Here. We'll do the same on the other side. Put the little rubber pieces on to protect the canopy. There we go. And then on each side, we'll be putting the battery tray release. As you can see, when you twist it, it locks out so that you can pull the tray out. And then you just twist it back. Pretty cool. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. You can see now, twist them out, put them back in. And we've got a couple screws above the battery locks, one on each side. Now we can put the third bearing block in. Just like so, the bearing facing uh, towards the manga. All right, next up is the tail servo mount. So we will go back to the frame and they mount to right here. now got the tail servo mount too all right next up is the landing gear Go ahead and install the skid end caps. And 
Now we can put the tubes in. I'm gonna do this side and then I'm gonna cut the camera so I can do the other side. That looks about right. All right, now is when we put the motor mount in. And this is when you find out if you forgot to put those nuts in there. So yeah, don't forget that. These are nylock nuts, so you don't need to lock tight these. And now we can do the side bolts. Don't forget the washers. I'm not putting Loctite on these because I got to take them out to put the motor in later on. All right, that is that. Now we get to put the tail fin on. Two fairly short button head screws. And while we're here, we'll go ahead and put the tail push rod guides on. Not fully, just throw them on. All right, so now it's time to take care of the tail push rod. You've got these clamps here. And I've got some JB Weld. So I'm gonna go and mix some of that JB Weld up. So these uh, push rod ends do have a little clamp design, as you can see. That is mostly for holding the ends on while the glue dries. It is not intended to be a glueless push rod end, so you do still want to glue it. So I'm going to go ahead and score up the end of the rod here. Get it nice and torn up. Get some JB Weld on there. You can use epoxy also, just regular epoxy, but I've always used JB Weld. So, push that in there, and then you can tighten this screw, which will hold it, and then take paper towel. Clean off the excess. Yep, so the good thing about these clamps is that once you glue them on and tighten the clamp, you can keep working on the heli. Um, not worry about having to let your push rod dry. You should still obviously wait fly it you know until your epoxy says that it is cured but you can still work on the heli and do setup and all that and just because it'll bother me I'm gonna make it so that the clamp faces the same way on each end and there you go that's the tail push rod. This is a very thick carbon rod. The walls are much thicker than I've ever seen before. This is insanely strong. Now, if you'll remember, I did not fully install these push rod guides. It's because we still need to get the rod in. So, we're going to do that now. Get it aligned in the front as well. And then I 
can uh, get these screwed down. Just enough to hold the rod. Obviously I'm doing this at the end so you can see it. I'll move them once I get everything screwed in and ready. Go ahead and connect it down here. I'm not quite sure precisely when I missed the part to install these two screws, but uh, I'm not following a manual, so I think it's excusable, but I'm only going to do that now. So you've got these four bolts, two different lengths. The shorter ones go on the left side and the longer ones go on the right. On the right side is where it actually clamps onto the boom. Now comes to putting the actual head on the machine. And I'm gonna do this in kind of an awkward way so that you can actually maybe see what's going on. So we're gonna start with the squash plate. Slide that down on there. Then I'm gonna take the rotor, slide it on, and line up the hole in the shaft. Then I'm going to grab my Jesus bolt. And head to the other side to get the lock nut in there. Now we can go ahead and take these bolts out, including the little washer and add some Loctite to the end of the bolt. All right, so I'm not gonna be able to show this because this thing is entirely too tall, but basically I'm tightening one driver arm a little bit, rotating it around, doing the same thing to the other one, going back and forth, tightening them more and more each time to try and get an even clamp on the main shaft. Now we can go ahead and put the driver arms onto the swash plate. There we go. We can now go ahead and install the swash plate anti-rotation. Just two screws. Well, that's pretty much it for the main mechanics. I've skipped a few steps here and there, like the um, grip arms and balls and linkages, and obviously the electronics. I need to go get uh, airframe weight, and then we can start on that. All right, got all that stuff done. Um, now it's time for the electronics. This is what I'll be putting in it. Um, ESC and everything over here is from my Tron and then this is a new motor production version of the Sunny Sky 4530. This is the short shaft version which is perfect for the M7. They have a long one as well for uh, other helicopters obviously. And then uh, got some KST servos. These are the HLS brushless hull sensor servos, and then uh, the LS905 for the tail. Rain 2, of course, free sky receiver, and uh, first RC buffer pack. Um, I do need to change out these bullets because the ones on my old motor are considerably shorter. Uh, the, motor the new motor comes with these bullets, so I'll be changing those out. I may need to extend the battery leads, I'm not sure. Um, I'll have to do a dry fit, see if it works out or not. And then I have this custom wiring harness that I built for the ESC for the Tron, which might be perfect in length or might be too long. We'll see. But um, 
Let's go ahead and get started, huh? So before I do anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and change out these bullets and I'll be right back. Shove this straight down there. There we go. And I don't know, I might not be able to get to a couple of those motor bolts. I can take the bearing off if I need to. But we're gonna try it first. So you should have the motor wires coming out the very front. According to this picture I'm looking at. And as you can see at the top there, the like I said, the short shaft version of this motor is perfect for this particular airframe. Yeah, that works. <laughs> I should just be using a ball or a ball driver, but this works. Just double check and make sure I locked out of these because I honestly don't remember. I think I did. I'm gonna do it again in English. Do the set screw. Now I need to find a flat spot. There it is. Good way to test to make sure you're on the flat spot once you put the set screw in is to have it a little bit loose. And you should be able to rotate the pinion a little bit before it hits the flat spot. And then as you tighten it, the amount that you can turn it reduces until you finally hit all the way. No, obviously it's locked in. That looks pretty good to me. Let's go put it in. there. Tighten these down. Yeah, feels good. Now I'm going to apply Loctite to the motor mount bolts and get those in. And remember the longer bolts go on the top on the actual motor mount. The shorter ones are for the counter bearing. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and do the ESC install. I'm going to just do the ESC itself, I'll do the, the signal wires later. So I'm going to figure out how this will go. About there, maybe a little further back. What I will do though, is remove these back screws and see if I can just tilt the tray forward. I'm not sure if that's a thing or not. Oh right, there's two in the middle as well, I forgot. Can't go super far forward, but far enough where I can get these wires and plug them in and run them underneath. 
I'm gonna push the motor wires over to the side and then these can come out the other side. I think I'm gonna go ahead and take the ESC tray off completely. So I think that'll make this easier to do. Normally you install all this stuff during the build, but because I wanted to get the airframe weight, I did not. So this probably be a little bit easier with some of the stuff not already installed. So now that comes out. I'm thinking about right there on the tray. So this part lines up with the edge of the strap. I'll grab some double-sided tape. About right there. Alright, now that the ESC is double sided taped, I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie it down. Looks like I can just get it started with two zip ties. Seems alright. Do the same on the other side. There we go. Now I can just set this back down here. And line it up. And screw it in. I may come back later and run a zip tie around these motor wires inside there. Just attach them to something, but I think it'll be fine. All right, time for servos. So these uh, washers that it comes with are pretty neat because in addition to being washers, they also center the servos. So you can see there, go into the servo mounting lugs and fit and there's no play feed this wire back behind here pull it out there for now The heli is now nose heavy enough that it can sit on my table without falling backwards, so that's nice. All right, now for the center servo, I'm gonna move these wires out of the way. Put the wire through there. Gotta make sure the screws not in there and slide it into place. And for this servo, rather than washers, they are basically just the backers with threads. I had to do the bottom one off camera because I couldn't get to it with the camera in my way. So I've got all these cyclic servos installed and the wires kind of where I want them. I'm going to go ahead and start on the ESC wiring um, and I'll be back. All right, got that routed nice and clean all the way to the back. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get the tail server in now. In the meantime, I have decided to use this HLS 
tail servo instead of the 905 that I was going to use. Uh, this was in my 580 Nitro and uh, I'm going to put the 905 in that and then put this in the, in the M7. However, before I actually install it, I need to center it and uh, at least get it close. So I'm going to do that real quick. Sorry, I know the camera is really unstable down here. It's at a really weird angle on the mount any bump and it just goes flying around <laughs> like that kind of tail servo is in I'm just going to connect the linkage real quick I probably won't be able to do this without moving the camera out of the way it's connected rod is definitely not the right length but I knew that that's a later me problem. So now I'm currently pondering where to put my buffer pack and my receiver. I'm thinking buffer pack here and receiver up there. I may end up taking the tail servo out to temporarily to do that. But if I put this with the button facing down about right there, I can get to it. Um, pretty easily to shut off the buffer so I think that's what I'll do yeah that works I can just reach in and go boop boop to shut it off I will need to get an extension for the buffer though because that's not going to reach all the way up but now I need to put the receiver in there okay now that I'm looking at it I don't really like the idea of having the receiver there because these aren't long enough to reach to each side of the frame um, I think I'm just going to get a different receiver one that's smaller that I can put up here instead that's better. So yeah, I'm gonna put this guy right about there, right behind the fly barless, and then either put antennas sticking out on the sides or off, off on the boom. We'll see. All right, check out my spaghetti. I made it all myself. About ready to throw the fly barless on there now. All right, I've been putting this off for long enough. I need, to, I need to make my linkages, so I will do that now. All right, now I'm gonna do the step that Normally, you'd be one of the first thing you do, but I had to do something with it first. But now we can go ahead and do that. So, I've done a fair bit of uh wire routing and getting stuff situated in the frame you guys don't want to watch that especially since it'll be a little bit different when you're installing electronics later versus if you do it while you're building a little bit different process so i figured i'd just show you the main mechanical parts are on. Now I just need to clean up the spaghetti in the back and we'll be good. Alright, so I've got wiring fairly well tied and tidied up. Um, haven't done the receiver yet. I'm not sure if I should put it on top of here and put the antenna guide there or if I should put it on the side and put the antenna guide there or on the boom or if I should put it there. I haven't decided yet. Figure that out. All right, I had to take a brief break in filming um, over the last day or so, but I'm back and we're going to finish this. So in the meantime, I've printed one of these, one of my boom mounted antenna guides. And uh, I think 
easiest solution is just gonna be to put the receiver either on the frame here or somewhere down here and just do that. So that's what I'm gonna do. Grab some double-sided tape. I can just tuck this wire away. I may need to zip tie that. There we go. Now I can reinstall the canopy posts. And that is the end of the build.